Thank you guys for staying for the podcast part of tonight's show. Um, I'm joined by, of course, Monet Morgan, who you saw, saw her short, woolly hair. Um, Adam, who is our amazing producer of our podcast and he just makes everything happen without him. Junior Booker, comedian and absolutely extraordinaire because he's just an extremely funny person just to be around. And he supports Man United so we, we feel sorry for him a little bit. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Simon London, multi-talented. I, I can't even give you all of his credentials because he kind of does everything. Um, at a very high standard Renaissance well. man. Renaissance <laughs> man. We'll do that. Yes, um, sounds old. <laughs> presenter, producer, radio host, all of the above. Um, so glad to have him on the panel. Darren Griffiths, who is an amazing, hilarious stand-up comedian as well, um, who joined us for Series 4 podcast. So thank you, everybody, for staying back. And we'll just kick off with the woolly hair short that we saw just before. No. Well, there you go. First of all, I'm a feminist, so um, any excuse to celebrate women, and especially black women, I'm here for it. So if you'd like to expand more on your inspiration and the creative process for Woolly Hair. Yeah, sure. Um, it, it, to get the film together was actually quite funny because um, me and uh, my cinematographer, uh, Carl um, Ward-Reed, or Reed Ward, I'm sorry, Carl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's double barrel, I can't remember which way it goes. Uh, we were supposed to do a project together that fell through, and um, in Wembley, in the outlet, um, just um, above the, uh, the cine world, we had a little meeting to catch up, and we were like, you know what, forget that project, let's go and do something our own. Mm -hmm. You know, let's do something independent, let's do something awesome. He goes, okay, what story do you want to tell? And I said, oh, give me three days. And um, within those days, I kind of just wanted to see, like, what what did I want to, what kind of story did I want to tell at the time? And, um, yeah, th th that was just um, something that I felt like kind of spoke to me, because at that time I was um, already three years into my natural hair journey. And um, I thought it'd be really cool and relatable to make a short film that could speak to the masses of people and kind of like give them an insight of stuff that we do um, and things that we kind of go through. Things that we are educating ourselves um, when it comes to natural hair. So um, anyone that saw the film, the YouTuber was actually me. <laughs> and yeah, I started in my own film. I probably won't do it again. No, do it. <laughs> And yeah, I just wanted to tell this story because it it's um, something that I not only wanted to tell, but I wanted like to see how the audience could uh, follow through this journey and see like how they could react and um, if it's relatable. Because from feedback that I have got, it was quite relatable. And um, at that particular time in my life as a director, I was like finding my voice. Mm. And I really got into um, the themes of like identity being something that resonates with me. And um, also being a black woman with these struggles, I just wanted to embrace the beautiful aspects of the, um, the film and like the message like, it has gone forward. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about, uh, you know, the making of Woolly Hair. Um, and as a sister, I know the struggle of the natural hair journey. Mm -hmm. um, there is the numbers of the hair. I have created my own one. I'm yes. literally 4D because my coils... 4D. Yeah, it doesn't exist, <laughs> but with my hair it does because it's extra coily. Um, but yeah, and then you were going to talk about... What were you saying? Oh, okay, that's just me in my head. Um, Adam, I'm going to hand it over to you to kick off the reactions for... No. No. Um, okay, well, let's... Should we start with the panel? with this what um immediate thoughts on nope what was your we literally ha we haven't spoke about it beforehand so this is this is like hot take what's your nope hot, hot take um yeah it's all right <laughs> that's that's a not a hot take that's a tepid take that's a junior take <laughs> yeah it's a junior take um yeah, it was good uh we got daniel Kalula. i'm a big fan of him um great actor and i didn't know it was kiki palmer he looks so young 
Um, I didn't know that was, yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't watch the trailer or anything like that, I didn't know she was in the movie, mm. um, but she's amazing. She's a singer as well, an actress, yeah, she so she's sing. amazing. She's really funny as well. Um, so, yeah, good movie. Uh, the Chinese guy, um, can I say that, Phil? Oh, Chinese we guy? Know if it was yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, yeah, sorry. Can we say Chinese? The Asian, the Asian. The guy that looked Chinese. Um, <laughs> the Asian guy. <laughs> I thought he was going to be in a movie more because on the posters, mm. it's definitely going to suffer. You might come back to save the day or something. Um, but uh, he was good as well. Um, there, I love that whole side story with uh, the chimp. I want to see that movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that seems like a good movie to watch as well. But yeah, the chimp was interesting. Yeah, it's very, it's just weird. It's Jordan Peele does that a lot. He just does weird stuff in yeah. his movies. Um, I like Jordan Peele from Key and Peele days. He's really funny. So um, Get Out was an amazing movie and. I like the comedy aspect in this movie as well, when he's the whole no thing, all that, and kept saying no, um, that was good, so, yeah, it was, it was alright, still. Simon, what's your hot take? Immediate. Didn't like it. Oh, what? Oh, Go on. Let me say that. Oh, yeah, Say more, say more. <laughs> so, um, I was just, I did do my hot take to the person sitting next to me just as they were leaving, because she asked me. Um, I think he's really lucky that that was his third movie and not his second, because everyone would have said that Get Out was a fluke and lightning in a bottle, whereas Us is brilliant. I think that Nope is like three stories vying against one another and you can't decide which one. Is it the story about getting the perfect shot? Is it the story about defeating this um, uh, UFO, which turns out to be an alien? Or is it kind of about the relationship between a brother and sister? And you never ever know what's you don't know what's there. I feel like I feel like I'm in church. Preach. Um, so I I think by not um, by not trying to uh, develop each story fully, he kind of had three half stories there. And like cinematography, brilliant. The effects, brilliant. The actors, brilliant. You know, he's got great script in there. I found I really like the Gordy story, but in context with that film, I found it self-indulgent. Um, Cause it didn't really, um, it didn't really, what's the word, um, reconcile itself. So I always think with story, any story that you have, you need to set up at the beginning and you need to, you need to set something up and then you need to reconcile it at the end in some way, shape or form. And you have to let the audience know where you're going and they can choose to go with you or not. This guy and knows with what he's this... talking about. Are you an expert? Are you working with him as well? <laughs> And with this, I just kind of think that, you know, just some really, really great ideas there, but it, but it, fell, it fell short in all of them, unfortunately. And everybody was good in the roles that they did. I mean, I'd have looked at the shots if I was the director and gone, this film looks great, cinematography's great, the actors are great, story just didn't hold it together. I found it disappointing. I'd give it four out of 10. No, not yet, not yet. Oh. Okay, yeah, um, it's mad because Simon said everything that I was going to say. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, 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 actually, but in the, jokes aside, I think you did articulate something that I couldn't articulate because I was saying to Adam before I, go, I, I came out, I said, I, I think I enjoyed it, but I don't know what I watched. That's, that's what was my thing, like, I, I, I enjoyed it. I won't be able to tell anyone what the film was really about. And that's all I left with. Now you've said that about there's three different stories and stuff I, that kind of reconciles in my head that oh, maybe that's what it was um for me i think you know i'm a fan of jordan peele so i want to like it and i think with other jordan peele films um it, it's the thing that they're always so smart and there's always such a message that's so esoteric and you don't understand what's going on and then you talk to someone they go actually but did you notice this bit and did you notice that because it's even man did this and he did that and i'm like oh yeah of course and I, I did know that um and i think yeah impressions of yourself yeah no, and that's and that's what happens and then i watch the film again but oh yeah that film's actually much deeper so while i feel like again i don't know what i watched i I'm also open to the fact that maybe in a week's time, when I've read all these different reviews, I'm like, oh yeah, you know what, that film was like, excellent. Isn't it? <laughs> and I just missed that uh, it all went over my head. So, um, yeah, so that's, that was my... Rachel, what's yours? What's you gonna... Oh, I'll go, Monego, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> Monego <Monet> first. <laughs> 
Um, I'll keep mine short and sweet. Uh, this is like the second time I've watched Nope. Ooh. And um, on the first uh, watch, I uh, pull out a Instagram story saying that I was quite underwhelmed. Um, because I felt like, for me, um, story is like king. And um, like this gentleman just articulated, it was like multiple stories. It just, it just felt like I was trying to follow something that he was trying to say and I got the funnier moments, but what the film kind of was about, I wasn't really sure. Mm. Now watching it for the second time, um, I put those feelings at the back of my mind and I started to rewatch it. Like it's not the first time, but let's see what I missed. And that's exactly what you basically said, that you might have to do that. I also looked at the views of people who also um, watched it and um, our film critics, and they were able to point out things that I got to see on the second time. And I um, found myself more appreciative of uh, the film. Um, I don't think it's his best work, but it's, um, this is a pretty decent, really good film. I like the cinematography. Um, I like, I think the editing um, kind of took away from um, some of the performance that could have been um, more, I guess, blockbuster moments. Um, I feel like Kiki, Kiki Palmer was really going, um, she was stealing the show, actually. Mm. I think she, um, I hate to say it, but almost outperformed Dan, Daniel. She did. She did. She did. She did a really great, <laughs> a really great job, and people really need to give her her flowers because she's been in the game for such a long, 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 long time. And people like to, you know, yes. overshadow black women in the film yeah. industry. Um, but um, yeah, again, short and sweet. Overall, it, it's it's a good film on the second watch. So I encourage people who felt a little um, underwhelmed to give it a watch again and you will notice things that went over your head the first time on. I totally agree with you. Um, before I go on to my analysis of the film, Kiki Palmer definitely stole the show. And I was really proud of that because I've known Kiki or seen Kiki forever. Mm -hmm. And so it was really nice to see her get that platform on like such a big scale. Like it was really, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. Like she had all the comical moments, but also the really dramatic moments. I felt like Daniel was kind of like the, not even second kind of just background. Yeah, took a super back seat. Yeah. Um, but what I did like about it was the sibling relationship and showing that as someone from a big family. <clears throat> <laughs> I can totally relate that sometimes you just scream at each other or, you know, there's just, there's always that love, but it's very, it can be that very up and down. And it was nice to kind of see that you don't often see that on the big screen. So that was one of the things that I felt it's, like they- Sorry, I just have to ask that. That's a classic case in point though, isn't it? I mean, their father dies. I mean, Daniel clears, he's not old, but he's not young. What's their future? What's their relationship there? Does he want to stay and look after the place? Does she want to go? Well, There's a really interesting story in there about yeah. what what their relationship could be. You know, she's does she want to like to have a family? I don't say she's can't... getting to that age, but you look at those two. You look at those two characters and you go, "There's no interplay between those two that. characters. What are their wants or what are their needs?" That just wasn't. No, but I think you got that actually because when he was basically saying like don't advertise your part-time, your extra hustles here. He's basically saying, focus on this. And you can see that his priority was the ranch and running the, the family business. And hers wasn't. Hers was like doing her own thing and standing in her own light, so to speak. So you kind of got that. I know what you mean, you wanted more and to build up on it, but I was okay. I was all right with it. Okay. <laughs> um, also, I quite, I do like it when they break up stories like the lucky and the the different the horses wasn't yeah, it? yeah the horse's name was lucky and gordy and stuff like that the chimpanzee. The chimpanzee. Yeah. Yeah. now that chimpanzee monkey scene was one of the best things i've ever seen but also it reminded me of joker you know when like the kid like robert De Niro just gets shot like randomly um, yeah. it was a very shocking moment yeah and that's what it kind of took me to but i feel like that had a double meaning as in like all of these animals in hollywood are trained to perform and one day they will switch like we kind of see these in films sometimes they're just like i've had enough i'm not going to be your monkey literally uh, to perform and i feel like that's what that 
skit sketch part represented was like animal cruelty and how Hollywood just kind of misuses people. And I think the reason why he didn't kill the child was kind of, I don't know, he was an innocent one out of everybody on that stage and just probably was, was being exploited as much as he was. I don't know, I felt like that's, I, maybe I'm looking into it too deep and I'm being extra, but um, <laughs> that's what I thought about that. Yeah, so that was the question I wanted to ask next was, so Jordan Peele's films are often an allegory for something else. And I think you're right about the, the, the monkey and the kid. I think that's that is the right thing. That's because the kid's exploited, he's exploited, and he recognised a, a fellow thing. But uh, so if us is kind of about the upper class and the underclass. That's the allegory. I couldn't. I can't work out what the allegory for this one is. Like, I'm, like immediately off the back of it, I don't come up and go, okay, th that UFO is a metaphor for. It's a metaphor for something because he goes. It thinks it's its territory. So there's and something the about it. Says, don't look it in the eye. I don't look well. at it. Yeah. I've got a thing about that. I don't look at it. I don't know why they just weren't just not looking at it. <laughs> but it's, it's very difficult not to look at some. Sorry. It's very difficult not to look at something when you know that you're not supposed to look at. It's kind of like that line in Inception where he says, "If I say don't think about elephants, now all you can think about is elephants." So I, th I get that. I think that he may have made a rod for his own back, like. Um, M. Night Shyamalan. Um, can I say that? Probably not. <laughs> um, but, you know, everybody expects now in his films there to be a twist. And when he couldn't really pull off the twist, you're like... And I think that with the allegory thing as well, it's very... I found that I was searching for what the... What's this trying to say in a bigger way? I think he... <laughs> you know that whole... I don't know if you caught it when... Um, they, they spoke about taking pictures and selfies and when the guy, the journalist, got hit off the bike and he was like, why are you not recording this? Like, why are you not capturing this? I feel like that was a reflection of society and always when something dramatic or horrible, horrendous is happening, the first thing we do is take out our cameras. We don't, you're not calling police or ambulance, you're like <laughs> recording the devastation first and then, you should not mean calling for help or whatever yeah. kind of thing. So I feel like the UFO, I don't know, is like the, what's our like, kind of, I don't know if I'm well, making Was you sense. meant to look for double meanings, but was that the homework or something? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, no, I just know that, Danny, I just know that Jordan, that's, there's always something hidden, but that was what I took from it. And yeah. kind of, you were getting in trouble or punished for looking. I don't know. Yeah, the guy on the bike, like I saw that when he was yes. like, yeah, why don't you look at it, why don't you look at it, yeah, I saw, I'm, yeah, I saw that in the movies, I like, look at the, look at it, why don't That's you my media studies yeah, title. Yeah. Well, when I watch a movie, I want to get it the first time. I don't want to watch it, I'm a busy yeah. man. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't want to watch it, I don't have to watch it again. I don't want to, um, but it, it was, it was a good movie. Um, out of 10? Out of 10. Five and a half, maybe six. Five and a half. Seven because I didn't pay for it. Um, <laughs> maybe three is always better. Eight because uh, of free gin. Yeah, I didn't drink my gin yet, but I'm going to get on that later. Um, but yeah, thing about Jordan Peele, his first movie was really, really, really good. The storyline, it kind of resonated with everyone because it was the subject matter that it was. Everyone just loved it, uh, especially black people. And um, so it was a really good movie. And we kind of like given them a pass to make not as good movies anymore. He should be making movies just as good as Get Out. Shouldn't be accepted anything less. Um, as an artist myself, or artiste, <laughs> <laughs> I always want to do better than my last uh, body of work or piece of work. So I expect that from Jordan Pill as well. And he's, he should be eclipsing Get Out, but he's not really doing so It's like, I can do what I want now. Mm. I've got a lot. And Get Out was independent. He didn't really get paid much for that, or mm -hmm. you know, have a big yeah, budget. Yeah. But now he's got a big budget. And I feel like he's not needs to get back to his roots and make more of an independent style movie. Okay, so a, a quick one. So with this is his second film with Daniel Kaluuya. Who has he? Who would you like to see him work with next? Who he's not me. working? Me. <laughs> <laughs> After all of that. <laughs> oh, that money. Oh yeah, seriously. Oh seriously. Uh, um, you guys think that was a joke here? Yeah. Uh, who would I like to see him work with? Lakeith Stanfield. 
Uh, the Radwin again? Bar? Yeah, the key to get, get out. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. What oh, yeah. that's what we first saw. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> with, the, with the camel. Oh, yeah. yeah. The like key from the lead. Yeah, but as a lead, yeah, because he wasn't really. I don't remember him. Yeah, the camel guy. Yeah. But Lakeith Stanfield. Or maybe the Childish Gambino thing as well. I like him as well. So, yeah. That's a good shout. I want to jump in and say, uh, Dabs and Idris. Hey. Yeah, do like that's all. Uh, just another British black guy just to piss off the American <laughs> system. <laughs> and they're really that's pissed off, by the way. Really pissed off, Samuel Jackson. Um, that's a really, that is a really good question about. Just interestingly, I had to review just last year. I think it was um the. Spike Lee film where they go back to Vietnam. What's it called? Is it called Five? Uh, five. Five Bloods. Five, five Bloods. Mm. Five Bloods. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I reviewed it, and afterwards I did what everybody else does. I read to see what other reviews were, and apparently it was Samuel L. Jackson. I'm uh, sorry, Spike Lee's most expensive film. And so I went and looked, and I think they had a budget of seventy million. Mm. And then I went and looked, and Chris Nolan, Christopher Nolan's second film had a budget of two hundred million. And it was making me think, what would you, Jordan Peele, it'd be really interesting to give him kind of like a big film like they did for Taika with TT, with, with um, a, Marvel. a Marvel. I'd like to see him have a really big, big budget and a big film. I, I don't know who I'd like to be in it. I was talking to somebody the other day and he said that um, he thinks of Tom Hanks as the, black De as, as the white Denzel Washington, which I thought was a really good line. Um, so uh, maybe Denzel Washington, but like, I'd like to see him with some really big actors um, doing something like that. So I've got a thought on this. I would okay. really like him, in terms of someone who needs a, potentially some image rehab, I'd like to see Will Smith give himself <laughs> over coming. to Jordan and he was coming. <laughs> Because, so this is what I think, this is what I think would benefit Will from to do this. Will doesn't give himself over to directors. Will is the most important thing in a film. So I would like him to enter Jordan Peele's world and be part of Jordan Peele's world. And I think, uh, I think, I think even if Jordan Peele can build an allegory around Will Smith and Hollywood stardom, I think like that's my homework assignment for Jordan Peele. Do you know what I mean? That is a fantastic suggestion. And I think it would be a great comeback to like his redemption film. We'd all see it. We'll, I'll be the first one. Three I'll times. Be there. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan? Um, I, I was trying to think while everyone was giving their um, answers and I, I, I don't know because maybe I need to know what the film and the story is about to be like, okay, this person is like perfect for this role. Um, I'm, I'm actually enjoying um, seeing what is considered raw talent, but they have like a good catalogue. They just needed that opportunity um, to really shoot it out the park and... Um, Again, Jordan Peele did that with um, Daniel oh, yeah. Kaluuya, even though he was on, uh, I guess he was on Black Mirror before. He was on Black Mirror and Sims. He'd and done Sims. that. Was it, that was, was it Sicario? Yeah, yeah Sicario. That, was, that yeah. I was a breakout. I yeah, and um, I guess all what uh, Jordan Peele did is just basically put him to this platform where, you know, um, he's seen internationally and now he's an Oscar uh, winner, um, not because of it, because yeah. he's he's a very um, great actor, one of my favourites. But yeah, don't have an answer, but um, yeah, I think that's what's considered for me the story. I'm unlike you, I don't have an answer. To be fair, just <laughs> a new piece of talent. Just you'd like you think you'd like yeah. him to give birth to an, like... because, because I also read that um, uh, Daniel Kaluuya was actually thinking about quitting acting just before he got the Get Out role. Um, so he, he says that Jordan Peele basically saved his career, so which is really cute to know. Um, I've got a question actually that I want to ask, or at least throw out to people. Yes, I'm let's do it. interested in this. It's amazing sitting there watching kind of the two black leads, but how much exposition or how much you need to mentally get over to work out what is the world they're living in. So you see, a black guy looking after a ranch and your mind is trying to chase up going, well, how did that come about? What did their neighbors think about them? Uh, do you know what I mean? I, uh, and I wonder whether, I don't know whether that's my problem or whether it's their problem or anything else, but I do, my mind is desperately trying to fill in the gaps when, and I, and I, I don't know, like I say, I think it's, it's just because it's a cultural thing. We just don't get to see, we don't get to see people in those roles and we don't get to see those stories so it's kudos to him that he just drops us into that world but it's very difficult for me as a viewer 
kind of, there were so many questions going around my head and I just wondered whether anybody else Can I, felt that as well. But I think they explained that about, yeah, they, they tied that up, they tied that up so, about yeah. him, it's a family business, His, her, she did the whole his, speech about his, yeah, his great, 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 great granddad, yeah. granddad um, started the first, yeah, to make a motion picture. And so this is like a, this is, that's why they are where they are. Um, now, I know what you mean that, I think in England, we find it weird, but actually in America, there is a big, didn't Idris Elba have that people. film? In yeah, the Cowboys. Famous, something. The Cowboys. What was it called? Does anyone know? Something Cowboys. The harder, the harder, the harder they fall. No, 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 there was no, another no, one with the Cowboys. Yeah, the Concrete Cowboys. Yeah. The concrete cowboys. yeah. Okay. Um, where there's a big community in America where black people ride horses. Well, the original like, Cowboys were black. Exactly. They? So I think it's more a British thing than yeah. America. I think in America it will probably be completely normal, but here we find it. We don't have any Cowboys in. The UK, really. um, <laughs> There's one in Stepney. Stepney? I've never seen Also, I think it's his. The other two Jordan Peele films have been thrillers and kind of like horrors in the sense of like realistic, whereas this is a uh, sci fi. So I think. Western. Uh, it's like a, yeah, Western sci fi. It's kind of a weird hybrid. So I think that's probably it's why. Horror as well, I would say. Like yeah. the, the mashup. It's a real. That's the other thing that well as well that makes it really yeah. But it's more of a sci-fi. No, no, you. You, you said, said it was a horror. Are you scared? No, yeah. Skeb and Skeb, when I didn't know those, they were those little kids in the stable. Oh, yeah, 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 the girl yeah. in front of me really, really screamed when um, <laughs> she, he turned and there was the little kid hanging down. Yeah, um, <laughs> could have been a guy. But yeah, so I think that that's probably the other thing that we're finding a bit. People yeah. are a bit unsure about. There's a lot of questions. There's usually a lot of questions, but there's usually a lot of questions. A lot of things are unanswered. Um, I guess that's what Jordan Peele wanted because he's a very smart man. But um, I don't like too many questions. I've got enough questions in life, <laughs> and I go to watch a movie. That's one of, I actually relax. think all the questions were answered. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just—it's a sci-fi. There was an alien invasion. Wants to take was there over. Alien invasion? There was no aliens. It was just like it's just an organism. Do you want to? Just... Should we hear? Uh, does anyone from the audience want to? I'd be interested by a show of hands what they thought. Oh. Oh, who overall liked it, I suppose? Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's more than 50. Okay. 50 <laughs> About 60%. 60%? Okay, and who hated it? Oh, that's just, that's just oh, hated it. Oh, there, was a, there, was a, there was a hand that went yeah. up straight away. Yeah, I think it didn't who, like it. Who's yeah. unsure? Who's who, unsure slash didn't? Second watch? We'll do a second. Second watch. Okay. It's a song pace, which she said. It's a tenet. It's a tenet. <laughs> it's a tenet. <laughs> it's a tenet. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so that was, you gave it a, did you rate it? No. First time I watched it, I gave it a five because if I wanted to give it a little, I didn't, I, I, it just felt wrong. Um, second time, I will give it a seven, seven point five. Quite high. Quite high. Adam? Uh, I'm on first watch. I'm going to give it a six, but I don't think I think you can't. Uh, that's not my final answer. Ask me again in a month when I've done it two more times. Yeah. Six. I love all this on second watch. You you got too much time on your hands. I don't, I don't have time to go and see films twice to get up their scores and make them better in my life. I'm giving it four and I'm staying there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, I'll, I'll give it five, but like I said, I'll read the reviews and claim that they, those are my own thoughts <laughs> when I talk to other people about it, so yeah. Um, I'm giving it a 6.5. <laughs> um, 6.5. I think I will probably learn to love it more as well, which is weird, but I enjoyed it. I actually really enjoyed it. I love the visuals, I love the acting, yeah, I loved really Kiki, funny. Yeah, really the funny. The cinematography was freaking amazing. Um, and like I said, I just love seeing Kiki get her a big stage that she deserves. She's been doing this for a minute, so. There's yeah. a lot good to say. There is a lot good to say about it, particularly from a technical perspective. And that's, that's one of the things why I struggle to give it anything less than five because there's so much technically alike. And again, uh, one thing I did want to talk about quickly, if we can, were, is Jordan Peele's Needle Drops. Because uh, I think his use of music mm. is really amazing. Yeah. This one, my favorite needle drop in this was Sunglasses at Night. I look, the, the slow down, chopped and screwed almost mm. sunglasses at night was really good i uh, hope that gives it a revival on spotify um but uh one question i wanted to ask favorite all time of the three jordan peele films what's your favorite needle drop that he's done in any of his films yeah. um i think i've got five on it 
Yeah. Us. That was quite impactful. I remember that. Yeah. That that made the trailer already pop. That like I I got five on it. The soundtrack. Uh, it's for me where she, sh she says to Alexa, call the police. And it just plays fuck the police yes. as, as they're yeah. being murdered. That yeah. is uh, that's that's a favorite. great, it's a great, uh, great one. I, yeah. I back that, I back that. I, I can't think of one um, particularly, but I do like the point made about music in the film in the sense of most horror films, the music turns up when there's going to be something tense happening. Whereas like in this film, the music goes off. There's that kind of eerie silence um now there's no ambient noise at all and then you know i shit's about to happen <laughs> I, like, I like that in this film so yeah um i could talk about a moment in one of his films um as everyone talks about like the chopped and screw aspect i remember distinct distinctively in uh, get out when uh the mother is turning the spoon in the mm. cup and then when she goes sink, it almost has that same chopped and screwed. Mm. So that might be a thing that he likes to play with in his films mm. to let you know that shit's about to go down. <laughs> and I agree with you, actually. That moment when he does sink, you feel it. Like, mm. every time I watch that film, I'm like, oh, she's trying to hypnotise me. I'm not watching it too hard. I'm not going to look at the screen because I'm scared that she's going to hypnotise me. Exactly. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, I do love the us moment. Um, yeah, that's yeah. one of my favourites. Yeah, the NWA yeah. is phenomenal. That moment had me in stitches. But that is it for now. Um, just want to thank you all for joining me, joining us this evening. Um, it was great to host this and celebrate Jordan Hill and Black Cinema. And hope you guys get home safe. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well done to your brother, by the way. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank Sean and Tossie. <laughs> oh.